Welcome and thank you for joining the SBA Virtual Town Hall with SBA Administrator Isabella Casillas Guzman. It is my pleasure to introduce our host for today's event, Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard. Congresswoman, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard of the 40th Congressional District, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's virtual town hall on how the American Rescue Plan can support our community's small businesses. A very special thank you to the Chambers of Commerce and Businesses Business Association serving my 40th Congressional District for their collaboration and help in spreading the word to their membership about this very important event. I also thank Victor Parker, the SBA's Deputy Associate Administrator for the, field of, uh, for the Office of Field Operations and Ben Raju, the District Director of the SBA's Los Angeles District Office and their staff for their assistance in making this virtual town hall possible. I also thank Dottie Lee of the Trans-Pacific Communications for making it possible to simultaneously present this event in Spanish, Korean, Mandarin, Thai, and Vietnamese. Personally, I was extremely proud to vote for the American Rescue Plan, which will help to get vaccines to the people and defeat the virus, return children safely back to school, put dollars into family pockets, and get people back to work. I was also very pleased that the American Rescue Plan provides $50 billion for new and existing small businesses, business relief programs, and it provides support for small businesses that may need help to make it through this crisis. This includes an additional $7.25 billion in the Paycheck Protection Program and an expansion of eligibility to all 501c3 nonprofits. It provides an additional 15 billion for COVID-19 emergency grants through the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program for those who applied for relief in 2020, but did not receive the full $10,000 grant. It also provides an additional 1.25 billion to the Shuttered Venue Grant Program to support the many struggling entertainment venues that sit empty due to this pandemic. And the American Rescue Plan increases funding for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, a program designed to help restaurants and bars hard hit by this pandemic. This morning, you will learn more details about these and other programs in the American Rescue Plan and how to access recovery-related loan and grant programs. You will also have an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. It is now my pleasure to introduce my co-host and good friend, Senator Alex Padilla. This year, Senator Padilla, who was our Secretary of State, was appointed by Governor Newsom to fulfill the rest of Vice President Harris's term. He is the first Latino to represent the state of California in the U.S. Senate and he is a Southern Californian who still calls the San Fernando Valley home. Senator Padilla serves as chairman of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Immigration, Citizenship, and Border Safety. He also serves as a member of the Senate Committee on Budget, Environment, and Public Works, Homeland Security, and Governmental Affairs, Judiciary, and Rules. Senator Padilla, I'm turning it over to you now. Uh, thank you so much, Congresswoman. It's great to uh, partner with you and all our efforts uh, in Congress. And thank you for the invitation to co-host uh, this timely and important uh, town hall for our communities. And uh, on behalf of all of us, I just thank you for your many years of leadership in, in Congress. Um, and a special thank you to uh, uh, Maria Salinas with the LA Chamber of Commerce, uh, President and CEO. I'll be turning it over to her uh, after my opening remarks. Uh, and a big thank you, of course, to our new SBA administrator, California's own Isabella Guzman and her team 
uh, for uh, bringing uh, today all the information and resources that will undoubtedly help uh, all the uh, entrepreneurs and business owners that are participating. Uh, you know, Congresswoman, you said it well, the American Rescue Plan is a huge, huge deal. Uh, one of the most significant actions taken by Congress uh, since the New Deal. Uh, and for all the attention that uh, the resources have gotten that come to state and local governments, uh, for school districts, of course, uh, assistance for uh, working families and how we've been able to improve vaccine distribution and administration, uh, the support in uh, the ARP for the business community uh, is hugely significant as we're trying to get through to the other side of the pandemic, our focus on the, the health aspect because we won't be able to completely reopen the economy until we have quashed the coronavirus. Uh, but in the meantime, I mean, since the beginning of the pandemic, some uh, 400,000 or so small businesses across the country have closed permanently uh, with a disproportionate impact on communities of color and many, many more uh, either on the brink or wondering how we're maybe going to make uh, the next payroll or pay the rent next month. Uh, I know in California, particularly in your district, Congresswoman, the entrepreneurial spirit of the immigrant uh, entrepreneur population is very, very evident. And so conversations like this are important to make sure that all eligible business owners can access the resources uh, that they need. Uh, so, uh, you know, the importance of small businesses, both uh, from a social standpoint, it's small businesses, especially where people tend to gather, whether it's restaurants or barber shops or uh, to access critical services. But from an economic standpoint, we know that uh, uh, it is the engine that creates jobs and economic opportunity for so many residents in California and throughout the country and affords employees uh, the dignity to provide for their families and work towards their American dream. And so the goal here is to make sure people are aware of resources uh, and services and can access those resources and services so we can replace those closed signs with back open for business signs. Uh, you know, in total, as you mentioned, Congresswoman, the ARP uh, allocates about $50 billion to uh, bolster grants and loans for small businesses that are still navigating uh, the tough economy of the pandemic. There's a specific uh, $28 billion program for restaurant uh, revitalization, $15 billion allocated to uh, uh, increase funding for the targeted economic injury disaster loan program. Uh, advanced payments, more than $7 billion for additional PPP funding. We know in the first rounds, many people were able to participate, but the pandemic has gone on. Many people who weren't able to access earlier rounds of funding, there's more funding available and we want to make sure we help you uh, access that. Uh, and of course, the one and a quarter billion dollars for the shuttered venue uh, operators grant program that you mentioned earlier. So uh, uh, as it is abundantly clear for the Congresswoman and myself, COVID relief uh, is not just shots in arms and those are important. It's not just assistance to uh, state and local governments, that is very important. Uh, and it's not just uh, for assisting uh, working families, that is critically important, but uh, supporting our small businesses uh, is a big, big priority as well. And so, uh, again, I wanna uh, thank our new SBA administrator, California's own, uh, Isabella Guzman and her team for being here today to answer questions uh, and give more specifics on how to access these critical resources. But at this time, it's my honor to turn it over to uh, uh, my friend, uh, the president and CEO of the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce, Maria Salinas. Thank you, Senator. Thank you so Maria. much for- Maria, I'll be sorry. Before you begin, I would like to let folks know a little bit about you. Uh, you are the first Latina in the 132 year history of the Los Angeles uh, Chamber of Commerce to serve as president and CEO. Uh, you have charted a bold future for the organization and you have also represented the business community across the state, the country, as well as our international business community. 
Uh, when COVID-19 hit California, uh, Maria, you ensured that the region's businesses and information ha had, uh, they had access to information and to the resources to help uh, our businesses weather the pandemic. You have been an incredible leader uh, at the chamber and I am so pleased that you are participating in today's town hall. Thank you, Congresswoman, for that lovely introduction. Uh, I, I'm just so touched to be here with you and to be here as part of this uh, incredibly important program. Uh, Senator Padilla, your words uh, about what this mean is, means to uh, not only this country, but to our small business community, I could not agree with you more. And to our honored guest, uh, let me congratulate again, our administrator, Isabella Casillas Guzman, uh, so proud that uh, she's at the helm of such an important organization, uh, the Small Business Administration. Uh, this town hall today is so important to really understand the implications of the American Rescue Plan. I know that we are all here among friends. We have a common goal of lifting up our communities, our small businesses, and to help our economy reopen and recover and emerge stronger than before. I know the leadership that the Congresswoman has, the Senator and our administrator are going to help us lead to a better tomorrow. The American Rescue Plan is a monumental piece of legislation providing support to families and small businesses with $50 billion of small business relief the increase of the grant and loan programs, the expansion of eligibility, this legislation provides a much needed lifeline to our small business community. The LA Area Chamber of Commerce has been at the forefront, leaning into this crisis since day one, knowing that in Los Angeles, we have a, a dynamic economy that is fueled by small and micro enterprises. We recognize that if our economy is to survive this pandemic, it meant that the smallest of businesses, our immigrant businesses, our diverse businesses, needed the resources and the relief funding to be able to navigate this. They needed the technical assistance and support systems. They needed the trusted partners like the Chambers of Commerce that are gathered here today a role that we embraced wholeheartedly. When COVID-19 hit Los Angeles, it dealt a significant blow to our small business economy and disproportionately impacted women and minority owned businesses. Working with the SBA, a longtime partner of the LA Area Chamber, we were able to provide critical technical assistance to demystify the, main, the many available resources. So here we are today again with this piece of legislation to help your aunt, to help answer your questions. It is our experience that being your trusted partner for our small businesses, we'll be able to turn the page and be the resilient region for the small business community here in Los Angeles. We're a global economy ready to step out and move forward and the fact that we have so many of you here to learn about the American Rescue Plan proves that we are ready. I know that we're gonna emerge from this pandemic stronger than before. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thank you, Maria. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our very special guest. Isabella Casillas Guzman was sworn in as the 27th Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration on March 17, 2021. She serves as the voice of America's 30 million small businesses and innovative startups in President Biden's cabinet. Administrator Guzman grew up in a small business family and has been an entrepreneur herself. She has spent her entire career advising entrepreneurs, launching uh, ventures, helping small businesses navigate government and creating policies and programs to
to help advance entrepreneurship and innovation. Most recently, she served as the director of the California Office of the Small Business Advocate, where she helps small businesses and innovative startups in the world's fifth largest economy start, expand and grow. She advocated fiercely for financial relief for small businesses and focused on expanding assistance to entrepreneurs in underserved communities. In addition, she served as the Economic Recovery Support Function Coordinator for the state, where she spearheaded the small business recovery effort during the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome, Administrator Guzman. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Roy Ball Allard, and also to Senator Padilla and Maria Salinas for hosting this timely and critical town hall and inviting me here today. It is a treat for me to be back in LA, at least virtually, uh, and with the friends and amazing leaders that I grew up and admiring. Uh, Congresswoman, your district feels like home for me. Uh, my father, Dr. Juan Casillas, started his first veterinary hospital in East LA. Uh, and later in Maywood, Huntington Park, Linwood, Montebello. So I watched him as I was growing up, put everything he had into his businesses to pursue the American dream and support his family. These vibrant communities always gave back to him, sustained and fortified him, as well as me and my brothers and sisters. Uh, it's also where I had my first political experience. Congresswoman Roy Ball Allard is a young teenager. I volunteered on one of your campaigns, making phone calls. Uh, you're an iconic Latina role model representing possibility and opportunity for so many of us. So it's really a privilege to be back here today with you. I particularly wanna thank you for all that you've done to help local small businesses during this pandemic, because I know that your town halls on PPP and idle programs helped get crucial information out to LA's entrepreneurs. And we need champions like you to connect resources to businesses. So thank you for collaborating with the SBA and especially our LA district office, helping Victor and Ben and the entire team get relief funding where it's needed the most. I do look forward to our continued partnership so we can help our small businesses through this pandemic and into recovery and beyond. I also wanna thank Senator Padilla for his support and thank you again. I can't say it enough times for introducing me at my Senate confirmation hearing. It was really important to have your familiar face and steady voice by my side to give me a strong foundation to kick off my hearing. Your support that day was really meaningful to me, especially because you've been such a strong voice for Californians, including as Secretary of State with small businesses, which I witnessed firsthand when I was there, as well as California Small Business Advocate. And uh, we're also glad that Governor Newsom appointed you to represent California in DC. Uh, LA and especially Congresswoman, your district is where my heart is as it's where my passion for small businesses was born. I've been a small business owner, helped startups grow and been their advocate. Uh, of course, most recently in California as mentioned, and I know how hard the past year has been in this region, in this state and in the country. I understand how this pandemic has ripped through our neighborhoods. COVID-19 has devastated too many families and cut too many lives short while also turning our local economies upside down. And LA was built by small businesses. Our community is sustained by small businesses. And that's why the best way to build back better is to give small businesses the support they need to recover and rebuild. Uh, as President Biden said, getting our economy back means bringing our small businesses back. And thanks to members of Congress, like Congresswoman Roy Ball Allard and Senator Padilla, help is here. The American Rescue Plan, a $1.9 trillion relief package was signed into law last month by President Biden with billions in targeted relief for small businesses and real solutions to control the pandemic. The American Rescue Plan does promise to change the course of our economic crisis and help our communities and businesses recover, reopen. And the SBA has a big part to play in implementing the relief. Our goal today is to share details about the relief coming and get California small businesses ready. I hear your questions and challenges as well and understand uh, what those issues are and take your feedback back to the SBA. So thanks for join us, joining us. I know everyone's busy schedules uh, and so I appreciate your taking the time. 
the plan, the American Relief Plan, really does include critical help for small businesses, uh, such as the $28.6 billion restaurant relief fund, which we've mentioned. It will provide immediate financial support in the form of grants, not loans, to restaurants and other food and beverage service businesses. The program allocates a minimum grant of 1,000 and a maximum of 5 million per location and $10 million total for each entity. The restaurant industry here in California and across the nation is such a big driver of local economies in our nation's economy. Our neighborhood restaurants oftentimes are the heart of our main streets and the pandemic has had a massive impact. Restaurants were among the first to close and across the nation, many are still operating under limited occupancy or takeout only or all fresco or outdoor dining. And in California alone, nearly a million restaurant jobs were lost. And while many of these jobs have come back with the limited reopening of restaurants, thousands have shut down permanently. We've designed the restaurant revitalization program with my values of equity, customer first design and technology driven innovation to ensure help goes to those who need it the most swiftly and effectively with prudent controls. Congress directed us to define restaurants broadly to ensure that the smallest businesses, the smallest of the small like street vendors, carts and trucks that make LA restaurant seeing what it is the most vibrant and diverse in the world aren't left out. Uh, we also are setting aside more than $9 billion of the $28.6 billion total to help smaller establishments, which is really so critical in this first come first serve program. In addition, Congress mandated a 21 day period for small businesses owned by women, veterans and socially or economically disadvantaged people, those who suffered the most from the pandemic, Congress created this priority recognizing that these businesses have been more impacted by COVID and have had less access to relief. As of February, more than half of US minority led businesses reported a drop in sales compared with the previous years, six percentage points higher than other small businesses, almost two thirds of black led businesses and almost half of Hispanic led businesses reported a more than 50% drop in sales. And the virus has disproportionately affected Latinos in particular who have been among the hardest hit by COVID-19 across the nation. And of course, uh, very impactful here in Los Angeles. For Latino small businesses, the data is stark. 32% of Latino owned businesses closed in just three months in 2020, which was almost double the number of white owned businesses that closed in the same period and reopening and accessing relief has been challenging. Our incredible team at SBA is working as quickly as possible to have the Restaurant Revitalization Fund up and running, and we will release more details very soon. We've tried to design a process as simple as possible while ensuring that those funds do get into the hands of those businesses it was meant to serve. We wanted to ensure that those without formal business structures in place or those who struggle with language barriers or who lack reliable technology or face other challenges are still able to apply. We're also working with eligible point of sale vendors that already work with many restaurants. The full list of companies is being finalized, but the great news is that they will publish or redirect their restaurant clients from their sites to the grant program application or website. And they're also prepared to help their restaurant clients create the data they need to apply to the program and help them start their application. This will be a first of its kind collaboration that paves the way for future innovations and in better getting much needed relief directly to small businesses. We need to meet our small businesses where they are. And for the first time in our relief grants, we'll have our direct application portal, uh, portal available in two languages, English and Spanish. We're also planning to roll out translation services in eight more languages. The American Rescue Plan also added more funding for our Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program. The program will give out $16.2 billion in grants to operators of concert halls, movie theaters, stages, and other venues to help them continue to pay their staff and keep up maintenance until we can bring back the performances and all those experiences that are the lifeblood of our culture. This is an important program for the LA area, especially entertainment helps drive our economy. And for example, every dollar spent on a concert ticket uh, yields another $12 uh, to be spent in local businesses, such as bars and restaurants, according to LA Weekly. 
Uh, this program is coming soon, as I said, and while we had originally hoped to roll out this funding last week, technical difficulties have set us back. Our team and our vendor are working around the clock to roll out this program because we know how many venue operators are desperately in need of relief, and we are aiming for the end of next week. We will continue to share updates and if give applicants advance notice so that they can be best prepared for when the application portal reopens. And for our independent contractors out there, sole proprietors and smallest of the small businesses, the American Rescue Plan also included $15 billion in grants to hardest hit small businesses. This includes the $10 billion for those who had applied for economic injury disaster loans or idle, idle advance specifically, but either did not receive the full $10,000 or had applied after money had run out. The SBA is reaching out via email to the priority groups, which include businesses in low-income communities who suffered high economic loss. The plan also included an additional $5 billion for supplemental targeted idle advance payments of $5,000 for the smallest of the small with 10 and under employees who suffered a more extreme economic loss. We are rolling out these programs and stages, and if you had applied to Idle Advance last year, you will be contacted if you are eligible. Our Idle program overall has been an important lifeline for millions of businesses on the loan side as well, but I understand that so much more is needed, and that's why as one of the first acts as SBA administrator, I was able to raise the cap on Idle loans to $500,000 and extended the loss period to 24 months as last year, businesses who applied couldn't receive more than 150,000, even if they were eligible for more. And we know that COVID has lasted so much longer than expected. We're also making plans to further increase idle eligibility up to the full amount of $2 million that Congress had originally intended. The American Rescue Plan also allocated another $7.25 billion to the Paycheck Protection Plan, excuse me, program or PPP, as I know that the Congresswoman had referenced. And for the last few months, SBA has been focusing on getting PPP to the smallest businesses. No, we know that so many of those were left out and we've changed many of their rules around PPP loans as well, really trying to open it up to entrepreneurs who were previously excluded with you know, non-fraud felony convictions or delinquency on federal student loan debt. Uh, which was disqualifying before, or non-citizen small business owners who are lawful U.S. residents uh, with their I-10s so that they could apply as well. And so this is why this town hall is so important, and I'm so glad you all took the time out of your busy schedules to join, just to hear more of these details and more importantly, hear from our staff in our Q&A. Hopefully many of you can take advantage of these programs or if you're representing our local chambers here today, you can help support LA area businesses in accessing these programs, especially the smallest of the small who may not know about them or who need that additional assistance. Uh, you will uh, definitely be hearing from our field leaders in a moment with more details, but before we move to that, that section, I wanna make sure that you know that there are other ways that you can stay connected with the SBA and all of our programs on an ongoing basis. Uh, I encourage you to build those relationships with our local SBA staff, as well as our small business centers and the chambers on this call. The SBA funds an incredible network of resource partners in the community and they have advisors ready to help you with these relief programs, local programs, and more. There's the Los Angeles SBDC network, as well as the Long Beach City College SBDC, or Small Business Development Center network, Pasadena City College, Pacific Coast Regional. Uh, SBA also has several women's business centers in the area that it funds, including PACE Women's Business Center and Asian Pacific Islander Small Business Program Women's Business Center. We know our small businesses need a team behind them to be successful. So lean on the SBA's district offices as well, or any of these other local resources when you are looking for help or have questions, a need funding or finding new ways to do business and expand. That's why we're here. That's our mission. And I can tell you that every member of the SBA staff lives that mission passionately. It's what makes me so proud to leave this agency and return uh, from my previous stint at the agency and leadership during the Obama administration. And it's what makes my vision for the SBA possible. Uh, under my leadership, the SBA will build, bring, build and bring businesses back, create jobs, and build an equitable economy that works for everyone. 
We know that too many of the smallest businesses have been left behind, particularly those owned by women and people of color who were starting businesses at the highest rates before the pandemic. And those disparities and barriers to opportunity were not just prevalent during this pandemic, but historically. I'm committed to an equitable economy that works for everyone as is a priority for the Biden-Harris administration. I've directed my staff to look at every program, every resource and every service we provide and think about how we can make each one more readily available to all entrepreneurs. We need to make sure all our small businesses and entrepreneurs can connect to opportunities to grow so that we don't leave any great ideas on the table. If we support all small businesses, we can better ensure jobs jobs are created and that our economies grow. As President Biden and Vice President Harris have said, equity is essential for building a stronger country for us all. While I'm implementing an SBA-wide equitable approach for fairness for all of our entrepreneurs, I'm also committed to designing our programs with a customer-first approach. We've heard that too often complex government processes or challenging barriers keep our nation's small businesses from getting the help they need from us. And we are listening across the SBA. I've told my staff that we need to be more like the small businesses we serve and think about our customers. We need to improve how our small businesses experience our services while still protecting, of course, tax dollars to make sure relief and support get into the right hands. For the past year during COVID, we've asked small businesses to pivot and adapt, and that is exact, exactly what we need to do at the SBA. There's no question that this pandemic has changed the way we'll do business forever. This SBA is not your grandfather's SBA. It has gone from a 40 billion portfolio to nearly a trillion in relief. And we're working with more lenders than ever. We've vastly increased our direct lending and grants, and we're meeting heightened demand, as well as increased awareness of our services. Right now, we're focused on providing immediate relief to our small businesses, but we're also looking to the future to build long-term recovery to help our small businesses grow and thrive. Our government guaranteed loan programs will be a big part of that, as well as contracting, international trade, investment, and innovation. All initiatives will continue to build to help our small businesses create wealth in their communities. Because as President Biden has said, we can't just return to where we were before the pandemic. We need to build our country and economy back better. And I want our 30 million small businesses and innovative startups to feel like the giants that they are in this economy. And I intend to be that voice for small businesses and help them succeed. Because if our neighborhoods, our communities, our nation, they need to have them in order to flourish. So thank you so much. Thank you uh, so very much, uh, Administrator Guzman, uh, for your informative remarks, and especially for your very strong leadership, especially during this time of crisis. I know that you're passionate about helping our small business community. It is uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Maria Salinas, who will moderate the question and answer portion of the program. Uh, we have questions that were submitted from our business community, as well as questions that have been submitted by today's participants during their registration. Maria? Thank you. Thank you so much, again, Congresswoman, for hosting this. Uh, and thank you to the administrator, Administrator Guzman, for all that information and those updates. Uh, we appreciate your leadership. Uh, particularly on behalf of women and business owners of color. We're grateful for everything that you are doing at the SBA to assist California's small business owners. Uh, so on behalf of all the attendees here, I wanna thank you for your participation. I also uh, know that uh, many of you have dropped questions in the chat and we're gonna go ahead and start with some of those questions. Um, I want to welcome the SBA experts who are joining us here today um, and, and will help answer some of those questions. We have Victor Parker, the SBA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Field Operations and District Directors from throughout California. Ben Raju, Head of the Los Angeles District Office. Don Golick, who leads the Fresno District Office, Heather Luzzi, who heads the Sacramento District Office, 
and Julie Clouds, who leads, leads the San Francisco District Office. So we're covering California very well here. Um, so let me go ahead and start this uh, question. And I'm going to begin with uh, Victor. And I know, Victor, you will come on screen, I believe, uh, in just a moment. Um, I'm ready, Maria, whenever you're ready. you are. There, there I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Victor. And I think, you know, one of the, the things that, that is new and different is actually calling out uh, the restaurants and the important relief for the restaurants. So uh, restaurants and bars, we all know, have been especially hit very hard during this pandemic. Can you speak a little bit to the restaurant relief fund uh, that's going to be opening up and what that means uh, to those businesses? Absolutely, Maria. And first, before, before I answer that question, I want to especially thank you and your leadership. Uh, the LA Area Chamber has been a longtime partner of SBA, um, and I look forward to continuing that, that relationship with you. So thank you for all you do. And the other chambers that are here um, have always been a great asset to us, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, with respect to the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, it is absolutely a critical part of LA's economy um, throughout California, as a matter of fact. Um, Oftentimes, our restaurants are really the pillars of our community. Um, and so this program is really going to allow us to provide direct funding from the SBA to that food industry. So it is a very broad definition of restaurants. Much like the administrator said, we've got this grant program or this funding program that will start as low as $1,000 and can go up to as much as $5 million. Um, so you'll be working directly with the SBA as we set up that portal. We're going to be looking at finding ways to make sure that you can access not only the information on our website, but also help you get prepared for that, for that uh, application process. Uh, we are working tirelessly to streamline that. We haven't launched the program yet, but we're looking to launch it um, very soon. And we'll provide that information so that you can, again, begin to pull your information together for the application. One of the things I, I want to emphasize is the fact that we're going to be looking at your 2019 tax data, revenue, et cetera, that's gonna be the focus area because we recognize last year in 2020, many of you had to make adjustments. You may not have been fully opened. You may have been only able to do takeout only. So we have made provisions to adjust for those types of things. Again, making sure we're customer focused and recognizing that this industry, particularly in California, has been so heavily impacted. Um, so if you are a brewery, wine tasting, food truck, all of these things will be encompassed. We call it restaurant, but we're taking the broadest definition of restaurants to make sure that we're as inclusive as possible and making sure that we're providing that direct relief. Um, you won't be working with our lending partners in this particular program, but you will be working directly with the SBA and leveraging those resource partners that the administrator just mentioned. Uh, we have a variety of small business development centers, um, as well as our women's business centers, um, our veterans business outreach centers and that communication uh, network as a tremendous resource for you to help you uh, prepare for that. So you're not out there alone. Um, it's not gonna be a cumbersome process, but if you need help with that, our district offices, as well as our resource partners will be there for you. Victor, thank you so much for giving us those highlights because I really appreciate the SBA's response to how do we be, uh, how can we be inclusive? So loans starting at a thousand, that can make a difference to somebody who is a very small uh, restaurant. And, and like you said, that broad category definition, working directly with the SBA, another big asset uh, for, for the smallest of businesses. And then of course, using the 2019 data, we all know what that means as a business owner. Thank Absolutely. You. And the key to this is it's not a loan. So this is actually a funding program, you know, call it a grant, whatever it is, but just to make sure you understand it is not a loan. So you will be able to get this money. We're not looking at it. It's not a loan application. So that's why we're looking to streamline those things. That's really important to a lot of businesses because of that concern with, with additional debt. Thank you so much. We're going to make sure we're helping you amplify what it is that, that this you. particular details. Let me go to Julie in San Francisco, and I know she'll come on screen too. And maybe Julie can help us speak to a little bit of what the administrator spoke to about, you know, the special services that are available for women business owners. We know they've been uh, disproportionately affected by the pandemic. We know we've seen uh, women 
leave the workforce in such significant numbers. But as business owners, Julie, maybe you can speak to us a little bit about how the SBA is here to support women-owned businesses. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that question. And I first would like to say, um, in case there's any question, that women-owned businesses are eligible for all of the programs and services that we've been talking about today. Um, we do encourage you know, women-owned businesses um, and including all other owned businesses to take advantage of the things we've talked about today. Um, but I do wanna emphasize a couple programs that we have that do target uh, women-owned businesses. And one of them is our women business centers. I know uh, the administrator pointed out some of the ones that are in the Los Angeles area uh, they are across the country, though. So no matter where you are dialing in from today, um, there should be a Women Business Center near you. And you can find out where those are located on SBA's website. We have this uh, local assistance tool. You just type in your zip code and you can find your closest resources. The Women Business Centers um, do target women. Of course, men, are, men can take advantage as well, but they do help women um, you know, launch their business, free business advising services, and they often offer a myriad of training programs um, that really are targeted to whether you're a startup and you're really just trying to figure it all out and figure out like, oh my gosh, what is all like the compliance things I need to do to start my business? Or if you are even a more experienced business and you're really looking for someone to help you take your business to the next level, whatever that is and means for you. Um, likewise, you know, obviously many, many businesses across all industry sectors have really been impacted by this last year. And you know, it's we've talked about pivoting and, and talking about new strategy. Um, I think the conversation needs to be, how do I get back to earning revenue, right? Uh, these these uh, COVID financing programs are great to help people get through a tough time, but we really need to find the resources and connect you with resources to help you start earning revenue again. And these business advising services are one great way to do that because they can talk about you and your specific business condition and your specific needs. Um, and the, pretty much everybody's working virtual these days. So you don't even have to, to travel to talk to someone. We can do it like this or over the phone. Um, I think the accessibility is even greater right now. Um, and likewise, we also have a new, newish tool that's on our website. It, it's a, a online learning platform called Ascent. And this is geared for women-owned businesses. It's a series of some micro learnings and there's different journeys that you can take as a woman-owned business. Um, we're still populating that, if you will. There's a couple journeys up already and more are coming. And so it's going to, again, be for businesses at every stage of their life cycle. Um, and it's going to talk about some really targeted issues. So if you want to just get some quick learning and some quick knowledge, this is a great tool. Um, it's on demand. So you can you can log in whenever it's convenient for you, because I know you're probably juggling 50 different things in, your, in a given day. So those are two I wanted to highlight as really great resources. And then the third is if you are interested in government contracting, um, there is a women-owned business certification program for federal contracting. And that's fairly new uh, as a full-blown certification. And we do have um, SBA team inside our district offices, along with our resource partners that can kind of walk you through that process, how to apply, how it can benefit your business, and whether that's a good tool that you should take advantage of. So those are a couple of things. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. You touched upon some really great items, but just on that last one, uh, there's no doubt that the ability to contract with the U.S. government can change the economic model for a small business. So we look forward to working more with the SBA to make sure we're getting that information out to our small business community as well. Thank Thank you for that. I'm going to go to Heather on a question that I think is really important and very uh, relevant to Los Angeles with so many small businesses, very small businesses, the mom and pops that maybe don't have a business bank account. You know, uh, Heather, maybe you can speak to us a little bit about how do they find a PPP lender that can help them when, they're, when they may not have a traditional bank uh, within their reach. Mm -hmm. Maria, thank you so much for that question. Um, it's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. I really would like to point out that since the inception of um, the CARES Act last March, 
the agency has actually went from about 1,400 lenders nationwide to almost 5,500 lenders that are participating in the program. So that gives you kind of the broad scope of how many lenders are actually trying to assist these small businesses. SBA has a tool on our website called Lender Match. And any applicant can go on and type in their zip code, type in the parameters of their loan, and be matched with a lender who would be providing that financing. Um, it's specific to um, type of business, the amount of financing, where those funds are being allocated, et cetera. So it's a great tool to look at. I would also add that our uh, small business development centers, our women's business centers, and our veterans business outreach centers are great conduits to create relationships with other lending institutions as well. Um, a lot of the fintech companies have joined in the PPP program, and there's a lot of different opportunities to get engaged with a lender that would be um, apt to loan to a specific business type. Great. Thank you so much for that. And let me just say to all the small businesses on this call that that match that you mentioned is so key and so important. And the fact that there's so many more lenders and various options available from where we started at the very beginning, uh, great credit to the SBA for responding to the needs of our smallest businesses. Thank you so well, much for that. Thank you, Maria. And again, I would just also point out that the SBA cannot do this alone. We rely on our lending partners and they are a critical component in us deploying these funds. So we're very grateful for all of the partnerships that we've created with these lenders. Absolutely. We, we definitely understand that. Let me go to Don, who's in the Fresno area, and maybe Don, you can help explain to us a little bit about, for those small businesses that are located in the rural or low income areas, you know, how can the idle loan, uh, uh, how can that, how, how can we target that particular audience in terms of the SBA products that are available? Yeah, great question, Maria, thank you. So the targeted EIDL advance, provides businesses in low-income communities with additional funds to support their recovery. And the best news is that businesses actually don't need to take any action to apply for the targeted EIDL advance because the SBA is reaching out directly to them. Businesses that might qualify for the EIDL targeted advance are going to be contacted directly by the SBA via email. And all of that communication will be sent from an official government email address that will end in at sba.gov so that you know it's legit. Um, applicants may qualify if their business address is located in a low-income community, if they can demonstrate a 30 per, more than a 30% reduction in revenue, and if they have 300 or fewer employees. To help businesses determine if they're in one of those low income communities and potentially eligible for the targeted advance, there's actually a great mapping tool on the SBA webpage that businesses can use. And we'll post that in the chat so that anyone who might wonder if they are in fact located in one of those areas can go into that tool, enter their address and find out if they may be eligible. And if an applicant receives an EIDL advance email from the SBA, then they'll then be asked to provide some financial information to confirm their 30% or more reduction in revenue during an eight week period, beginning in March of 2020 or later. And then lastly, applicants need to have the 300 or fewer employees. And so business entities that are normally eligible for the EIDL program, things like sole proprietors, independent contractors, and even private nonprofit agencies are all potentially eligible for the EIDL targeted advance. There's a lot of great information on the SBA webpage on the targeted advance, and SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance is actually processing these applications. And I did uh, respond to a couple of questions already, but we'll make sure that we also post the information about how to reach our colleagues in the Office of Disaster Assistance. So for anyone who may have a question, you'll have the contact information and you can reach them that way. Thank you, Don, uh, for that response. I also wanted to, again, to let the audience know this mapping tool that you mentioned 
you know, clearly the resources on the SBA website um, are great, uh, should be of a great interest to all of us. So thank you very much for sharing that. I think we have, we'll have time for one more question and I wanna go to Ben, who's our director for the Los Angeles district. Uh, can't get, leave out Los Angeles, Ben. Um, but maybe you can speak to us of the SBA services for those non-English uh, speaking uh, entrepreneurs, because uh, we know Los Angeles is so diverse and today's webinar is being translated into several languages. Uh, ben, can you speak to us about the resources the SBA has uh, to be able to assist uh, the very uh, diverse uh, businesses that we have, uh, uh, not only in Los Angeles, but across the country? Thank you so much, Maria, and thank you for that question. I think it, today we're getting a very good demonstration of how the SBA and how our partners working with the congressional office, working with the senator's office, working with your office there at the chamber, we've been able to bring the resources of the federal government and the local districts to be able to service our small business constituents. And in doing so, we've been able to offer this webinar in a variety of different languages. The SBA itself has taken, uh, has taken this opportunity to be able to provide all of our COVID resources in multiple different languages available on our website as well as expanding opportunities to be able to do things like we're doing here today and making sure that business owners that prefer to receive or are more comfortable in receiving or need to receive information in language that they're able to do so. Uh, in doing so, we've been able to uh, make sure that the hardest hit, our minority, our underserved markets and communities, our business owners and entrepreneurs are able to access equally the resources that are available. Our website, uh, you'll be able to see uh, multiple different uh, resources that are interpreted into different languages. We have translation services that are available for folks that need um, additional assistance in language. Um, and one key resource that I want folks to do is get to know your local district office. The local district office of the US Small Business Administration, wherever, as Julie pointed out, wherever you're calling them from, get to know them. It is important, um, as the administrator pointed out, a resource for our small business community. We work with a variety of different folks like our small business development centers, our women's business centers, our SCORE offices, as well as our veterans business outreach centers um, and local chambers, our local government officials to make sure that we are that one-stop shop for business owners to be able to access the resources that are best for them. Additionally, Business owners, and we have a lot of questions that are very specific in the chat about specific scenarios and one-on-one and -on -one, um, type questions. Our resource partners are there to be able to service and help our small business owners one-on-one -on -one, uh, to be able to make sure that their questions and uh, get answered and they access the resources that they need. Please reach out to our office, sba.gov. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we'll put the information in the chat box as well um, and make sure. I also want to um, take, a, take a second, and um, I know Victor, um, and we have all been talking about the entertainment industry here in Los Angeles, and we want to make sure that our yep. uh, local community has access to that. We've talked about restaurants, we've talked about you know, a variety of different industries. Um, Victor, I'm not sure if, uh, if you wanted to cover a little bit about uh, the entertainment industry for us. And, sure. and I, I was uh, just told we got a few more minutes, so we don't need to rush through this. <laughs> so, but that is an important question. Thank you, Ben, for teeing that up about the entertainment industry. So, uh, Victor, the floor is yours. And I thank you so much for me, and I'll be really mindful of time, but it is such an important industry. So the Shuttered Venues Operator Grant Program that will be launching hopefully next week, where we're almost there, um, is really designed to make sure that all of our movie theaters, our concert halls, um, the independent small uh, venues and theaters that we have throughout the Southern California area will provide, um, have funding for that particular industry. Um, and so it is designed as a grant program. You will have to re register with the System for Awards Management. You'll often hear it referred to as SAM.gov in advance. Um, we've got great information on our website about this particular industry. Um, and so if you go to SBA.gov, and look for, you'll see the acronym, the federal government, we love acronyms, SVOG, uh, Center for Shuttered Venues Operator Grant. 
you will see um, not only an information session tutorial, but you'll also see a tutorial about how to register on SAM.gov because that industry is just so critical um, to our economy here in California. And we wanna make sure that folks have that opportunity to do that. It's, it's a $16.2 billion grant program. So we really wanna make sure that those funds are accessible. And last but certainly not least, with all the programs that myself and my colleagues and the administrator talked about today, um, they're available for everyone. Um, and some of these may not have been traditional. So don't disqualify yourself. Please encourage your members and, and as business owners, don't disqualify yourself. Go back to that one-on-one -on -one counseling services that Ben just referenced um, to make sure we put you into the right program and make sure you have access to all of those programs. So, many, so often folks think, well, I'm not gonna qualify because of this or that. Um, it's really not designed for that. Congress, and thank you, Congressman Webel Allen and Senator Padilla, because they really made sure that these programs are accessible and on an equal playing field for everybody. So thank you, Maria. Thank you, Victor, for, for that and really highlighting uh, the entertainment industry, because again, that was something new. And, uh, you know, I know uh, ourselves and other chambers and, and so many partners that are here on this line uh, know that you can count on us to help amplify uh, what's available there. Um, we've had some really great information shared with us. Uh, clearly, the SBA is leading in providing the relief to the small businesses and the very small businesses, those micro enterprises that are in our neighborhoods that are you know, really uh, the fabric of our community. So I wanna thank the entire SBA team for sharing and uh, at providing that additional information uh, beyond what the administrator shared earlier. Um, we will close this with these questions right here. I wanna thank all of you for having me. I wanna thank you, Congresswoman, for putting this together and really bringing this information forward. I look forward to working with you, the SBA and others, this broad coalition that's here of Chambers of Commerce to help our small businesses emerge stronger than before. Thank you, Congresswoman. I'm gonna pass it back to you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Maria, for moderating the question and answer portion of the program and for all your hard work on behalf of our, our business community. You are definitely are one of the most effective uh, presidents of the chamber uh, that we have ever had. And so uh, happy Thank to have you. you. Thank you. I also would like to uh, extend my sincere thanks to Administrator Guzman for participating with us on this town hall. And I truly look forward to continuing to work with her as we champion our uh, small business interests. Thank you also to our uh, Senator Padilla for co-hosting today's town hall with me and for his leadership on behalf of our great state of California. I can honestly uh, tell you that although he is new to Congress, he has already established himself as a strong, effective leader on behalf of the state of California and uh, our nation. To the SBA team, uh, my staff and I greatly value the partnership that we have as you work with us in helping small businesses grow and prosper. And because as you know, they are the engine of our national economy. Lastly, and certainly not least, I wanna say thank you to everyone who participated in today's virtual town hall. We sincerely hope that you found the information uh, helpful. And I know that there are many, many more questions that everyone has that were not answered. But I've been told that uh, the SBA staff will in fact get back to all of you and answer all the questions. In addition, please know uh, that all our offices are available uh, to assist you with any issues or questions that you may have about SBA resources. And in addition uh, to those who are from the 40th Congressional District, uh, please know that my district is always available to be assistance with any federal issues that you may have. So thank you for spending an hour or a little over an hour with us on this Friday morning. And we hope that you have a great and safe weekend.